Hi, I'm Rich. Building an electric bike, part five, the brakes. So today we're putting the brakes on the bike and for that we'll be using the Megura MT5E disc brakes. These are hydraulic four piston calipers and they can provide 200 kilograms of stop and force per rotor, which is a hefty amount. I'll be running a two or three millimeter rotor on the front and a 180 on the back. Now these wheels aren't designed for discs. They don't have any mountain areas or anything like that, so I'm gonna have to do it completely from scratch. Let's get to it. These brakes are designed and engineered in Germany and they are really awesome. These are specific electric bike brakes. The real clever part about these brakes is the trigger. Basically it's split here and when you start to pull on the brake, it clicks before it even starts pushing down on the piston and that click sends a signal down this cable which plugs in in the computer screen and that automatically cuts out the motor and can also turn on brake lights if you have them fitted before you even start braking which is a really cool feature. Now on the front wheel it already has some holes drilled in it which perfectly align to the holes on the rotor which is handy. On the back wheel not so much I have to drill my own holes in. The plan is to connect them holes to the holes on the rotor using a bit of tube and some nuts and bolts. So here what I'm doing is I'm cutting up that tube into six sections to match each hole on the rotor and on the hub. And this is just going to go between the rotor and the hub and it's going to be held in place by these bolts that you can see here. And that's just going to have a little nut on the end which is going to securely attach the rotor to the wheel hub. Now the hardest part about mounting the brakes was to get the rotors straight on each wheel. To achieve this I would spin up the wheel in the frame and use a pen to mark the rotor disc at the points where it would flex out, meaning it wasn't straight. I then used them markings to identify which sections of tubing needed to be shortened. This allowed me to take it apart and grind down a tiny amount off each section of tube that was too long. I then put it all back together and gave it another test to see if it had straightened it all, which it had, but it did take me about four or five attempts until I was able to get the rotor perfectly straight on the wheel. Now that the rotor is on and it's nice and straight, we can mount the caliper. So that's going to sit around there roughly. Now I just need to make a little bracket for the caliper to attach to, to mount it to the front four. So this is the bolt that comes with the caliper and this is what's going to go into the steel to hold it on. Now how I'm going to attach it is I'm going to drill a 5mm hole in the steel and then I'm going to use a 6mm tapping bit, put some threads into the steel so this can screw directly into it. Now what I'm going to do is bolt the brackets to the caliper in place so I can slide it onto the disc and get a general idea of where they're going to go and how long the next section of bracket needs to be cut. These little yellow plastic stoppers are just in case the brake gets pulled and the pads get squeezed in so it can be hard to separate again. Now I'm going to tighten this screw in the middle of this sliding slot and that's just going to give me the maximum amount of adjustment when it gets welded down. So here I've mounted the brake lever to a bit of stainless steel and I've put a strap around it so this is actually applying the brake right now and what that has done is clamped the brake caliper to the disc 
in the position where it needs to go. So now I can measure what sort of lens I need to connect the bottom section of the bracket. Now what I'm doing is wrapping all the important componentry in wet rags just to give it a bit of protection from the welder. After doing a few spot welds to hold it in place, I'm now removing the wheel and the caliper so I can continue to weld up the rest of the bracket without worrying about heat from the welder damaging any parts. I've just cleaned the rotor to get any dirt and grime off it and now I'm wearing gloves to stop any natural oils from my fingertips contaminating that rotor as I don't want any of that getting onto the brake pads as it can heavily affect the brake performance. Now I've attached the caliper to the fork, I'm just making slight adjustments and spinning the wheel until I can see that the discs spin in pretty much perfectly straight through the caliper. Now we've got the front wheel sorted, just need to do the same on the back. However this one, the hub doesn't have any pre-drilled holes in it. So I'm just going to do the same as the front, however I'm just going to put my own holes in this hub to match up with the disc. Now I've got two holes in, I can clamp it down with two of the bolts and hold it in place so I can get a good alignment for the remaining four holes using the drill to mark the hub. An issue that I've come across is the steel that I use to make the handlebars is wider than the normal width of a push bike handlebar, meaning that the hand grips and brake levers don't actually fit on. So a solution to that is I'm going to cut off the handlebars and I've bought some correct size tubing and I'm going to weld them on in place of the, this wider diameter tubing. Now you might think that's going to look stupid, but most of this is going to be covered up by the hand grip anyway, so you won't even see it. Now I've got the brake levers on, I'm just going to cable tie the excess tubing until I know exactly where I'm going to route it around the bike frame. And now a test for the brakes on some wet grass and some dry tarmac. Thanks for watching.